Well, the kids are napping and we have a lot to get done in the garden today. Gotta take advantage of being able to get an hour by myself out here. You can see this whole patch of borage right here. We don't really have any use for this much borage. Um, I, I honestly doubt anyone has a use for that much borage. And it's actually smothering some, some carrot plants that we have in here. If you take a peek down here, you can kind of see that they're just underneath the foliage. So we gotta trim back a bunch of this borage, let these carrots get some light so they can get a chance to develop. And then over here in this bed, we have some cabbages and a couple broccoli plants and it's time for this stuff to get out it's had its chance it's pretty aphidy but you know maybe there's something salvageable in here but it's got to go out because being at the beginning of august here we are reaching our last chance for when we can plant things basically we have a, a two-month window here for hard frost and if we don't get stuff into the ground now it's not really going to get a chance to to grow the amount that it needs to most of our crops are a 60-day crop so now or never okay a bunch of this borage is into the basil too and these i'm not even i'm not even going to bother with any sort of trimming i'm just gonna pull them all out because I like basil better than the bees like flowers, so I win. Borage is kind of prickly. It's probably another, it's probably a job that's a little bit better to do with gloves on, because I can feel them stabbing my hands. But, you know, just build up your gardening calluses, right? We didn't actually plant any of this borage borage seeds. Let's see if we can find a couple in here. They're a really big seed. And there we go. There's some. Yeah, so those seeds, because they are so large, you can see them here. They're all throughout the garden. They get into everything and they can outcompete anything else because they have so much energy stored in there. So if you do not thin it when it first pops up, you will get a borage patch like this uh, as long as you use the, the no-tilling technique that we use. You know, it was, it was nice for a bit, but you know, at this point it's kind of it's kind of just done and I need to help help those carrots out if I'm gonna actually get to harvest any. I actually have borage still over here in my garden and I have some up against my house as well. So I, I don't actually mind ripping a bunch of it out. It makes a little bit more space for walking through the garden. Ian always complains that I don't leave any space for the paths, so he wins this time. Well, it looks like we had some casualties in the 2017 borage culling, but this section is definitely looking a lot better. I left a couple of the younger borage plants in there because they still have a few flowers left, but you can actually see some of those, some of those carrots now, and. Here's our massive pile of borage. This is half of it. We got another pile over there. So that's some good fodder for the compost. We've seeded about 28,000 borage plants into here by tugging them out when they had seeds attached. But, yep, definitely looking a lot better. Since I pulled all those out, all that stuff's going to basically be used to having a lot more of a green mulch on there. So I'm going to have to watch it a little bit. You can see how, how much moisture is in the spots where it comes out for the drip. So it's probably going to need a little bit of babying, a little bit of hand watering for the next couple days. But hopefully those carrots can, can do something and form up before, before the end of the season. Okay, last job of the day. We gotta get these broccolis out for sure. 
And I do want to pull out a couple of these cabbages, see if they've done anything. A few of them look pretty good, but half of them are just covered in aphids. So I'm wondering if there's actually any cabbage underneath there. And I don't want to give them too much longer in here because, as I said earlier, we need to make some space to get everything planted. So we're going to rip these out and cross our fingers that we will be eating cabbage sometime this week. I know my daughter's obsessed with broccoli this year. She's she was sad when I told her that we were going to be pulling these out today, but there are some little baby there's some little baby broccolis on here. So I'm going to save the full plants for her to just snack on, and that'll make up for ripping them out a little bit for her. Okay. This one here is pretty nasty. Okay, pretty covered in aphids, but let's open this up. See if we can get anything out. You can really see how, how bad this is. We don't have a lot of luck with anything of the cabbage family, just because it gets so gross with them. But there actually is a little bit of little bit of firmness in here, so maybe we can peel this back a little bit and see if there's a heart that is unaphided. You know, I'm not it's not worth the effort of experimenting with cabbage to rub aphids off of individual leaves. Yeah, but, you know what? My hands are super dirty, but it's looking pretty good. Like, at this point I'm not finding any more, any more aphid colonies in there. So, you know, we got a little bit of a baby cabbage once, once I wash some of the dirt off, but that's not bad, you know. It, it was just an experiment this year, so I'm I'm pretty happy with that. I'd probably try growing cabbage again. Uh, Leah loved the broccoli so much. We did get actually a couple nice heads of broccoli off of it, so that's definitely on the list for next year. But you know, I'll I'll pick those aphidy ones. I'll get rid of some of the aphids that are right here right now in taking away all this plant matter, and maybe that'll give the the couple plants I'm going to leave a chance to grow something a little bit better than this. But you know. It, it's dinner at least. Okay, so I've got the cabbages all cleaned up. When I went to do the second one, this one here, you can see there's not really much firmness to it. Uh, it, it was pretty bad, so I don't, I don't necessarily like dealing with aphids. So I just, I pulled them all out. But we got a couple, couple pretty good ones here. You know, this one's got a nice size. Both of these have a lot of a lot of denseness to them, nice and heavy. And the other ones aren't too bad once I stripped off all the layers. You know, it, we had some space in the fridge, so that's all filled up now. And we will be eating coleslaw. And then there's the, the carnage. All this stuff is pretty buggy, so I'm probably not gonna throw it into my compost. I don't really want all these aphids to just fly off and get into the garden. We have a composting, a uh, city composting program, so I'm gonna throw those into my green bin and get rid of them. But pretty good, got my got my cleaning up done, got these pulled out, I got this bag of, of greens from all the thinning. So we're, we're definitely set for dinner and I'm probably running out of time for nap time. So I gotta get inside, but you know, not, not a bad little bit of work done, you know? Just get out here, work on it every day, make it, make it work for your life, make it work for your schedule, and, you know, get some food out of it. Okay, so if you like seeing what we do in the garden, make sure to subscribe. We have lots of, lots of vlogs going up, lots of how-tos and stuff, and we will see you next time.